So we've seen two different kinds of objects that are iterable. We see that you could iterate through a list. You can also iterate through the characters in the string. What if you want a loop to execute a certain number of times, but we don't really have anything to iterate through? Well, there is a function called range. It actually, what it does is creates a range object and that range object uh, is an iterable thing. And by the arguments that we pass into it, we can say the range of numbers that we want it to iterate through. So in a manner similar to what we saw with slicing, the last number that we list is actually one more than the number that we want to have in the uh, iteration. So if I want it uh, to, to step through the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, then the range I would define would be going from 1, 11. If you want the stepping of the numbers to skip numbers, you can put an interval other than 1 as the third argument. So this could use two arguments, but it can also have three. So if I say range 2, 10, 2, that means it's going to skip by twos, so it'll do two, four, six, eight, but it will not do the 10 because it always skips the last one. If we uh, use a negative number for the interval, then it will step down backwards through the numbers. So if we say range 10, comma, zero, step negative one, it'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, but it will not iterate on zero because it always skips the last number in the range. So here is an example of how we can use this. So when we iterate through a range, then we can specify a variable that will have the value of the number that we're iterating on as we iterate through the range. So if we use a range of 1, 11, the first time it does the indented code block, then the value of number is going to be 1. The second time it does the indented code block, then the value of number is going to be 2. The third time it does the, the indented code block, then value of number will be 3, and so forth, until we get all the way to 10. Now, if all we want to do is just have it um, perform the indented code block a certain number of times, we don't actually have to use the value of number for anything, but we can use the value of the number that we're stepping through in a calculation or something. So for example, as it steps through each of the numbers from 1 to 10, I can have it take the square. So these two stars means create an exponent of 2. And then I can take that the square of the number multiply it by pi, and that will give me the area. Then I'm going to do a little trick here. I have it print the value of the number, and then this is a tab character, so that'll have it jump over to the next tab stop to try to get the numbers to line up, and then I'll have it print the area that it calculated. So it's going to do that, calculate the square, calculate the area, and print that out for each of the numbers as it iterates through the range. Once it's iterated through all the numbers and done the indented code block 10 times, then it'll step back out to the outer indentation level and it's going to print this message. One final comment, um, and we'll see this in the last example. It's very common to use the length of the list as the end of a range. And that's useful because remember that we saw the length of a list is the actual number of items, not the number of the last item. But when we specify a range, we specify one less than the uh, item we want to end up with. So if we specify the length as the end of the range, then one less than the length will be the index number of the last item on the list. And we will end up iterating through the entire list. Um, and it will start with the, the zeroth item because remember that Python is zero based. So let's go ahead and see some examples here. 
So here I'm going to count back, count from one to 10. Um, here I'm using a interval, or a, sorry, a step that is a negative number. And notice that it did not iterate on zero, it stopped at one. Here's a trickier one. <clears throat> so I'm going to have it skip uh, by twos, starting with two, and go through eight. Now, this is actually a, a kind of an interesting trick. So what I'm doing is I'm defining an, a variable called cheer, and I'm assigning the empty string to that. Then each time that it iterates through one of these numbers here, it's going to take whatever the string was that was stored in cheer before, then convert the number into a string, because remember we cannot concatenate a number in a string, we can only concatenate a string in a string, so it's going to turn the number into a string and then attach it to the end of whatever was there before, and then add a comma and a space on the end. So it'll do that for two. Then when it goes to four, it'll take what was there before, turn four into a string, stick it on the end with a comma, and it will keep doing that until it goes all the way up to eight. Remember, it will not do 10 because it always skips the last one. And then after it has iterated through two, four, six, and eight, then it's going to take this string that it's built by concatenating things onto the end of it, it with each loop, and it's going to add who do we appreciate on the end of it. So the final value of cheer will be all of the bits that we stuck on during the loop plus who do we appreciate. So let's go ahead and run that. And we can see 2468, who do we appreciate? And this is all printed on a single line because we have concatenated these strings together before we printed them out. Now here's another strip, uh, script that is a little more complicated. Um, so here is our list of fruits again. But now, um, instead of just iterating through the items on the list, like I've done in previous examples, I'm iterating through the range that goes from zero to the length of the basket. And this is what I talked about before. So if I count the items 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the items range from 0 to 4. But the length of the basket, which is the number of items on the list, is 5. So the range 0, 5 will actually go through items 0 through 4, which is all of the items in the basket. So by specifying range 0 to length of basket, then I'm generating an, an index number for each of the numbers in the list. Now, why do I want to have the index number instead of just actually iterating through the items themselves? The reason is that I want to be able, I, I want to number the items as I print them off. And so I'm actually going to use the fruit number, which is going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, but I'm going to add one to it before I print it out. And then I'm going to turn it into a string, concatenate it with a space, and then uh, put the um, basket item for the particular index number that I'm on. I will do that for each of the items in the list. So the first time it's going to do apple. Apple is item zero, so it's going to print zero plus one. It'll print one a space, and then apple. Then when I iterate to item number one, it'll print one plus one is two, a space, and orange. So it'll go through and print the numbers going from one to five, and then the, um, the name of the item on the list. And then in the last phrase, it'll say, you can see that there are, and it will, um, print the length of the basket, which is the number of items on the list. So let's go ahead and run that. 
So the nice thing about this is this is essentially a program that numbers items on a list. Um, I don't have to have the items be um, the fruits in the basket. I could take any other item on the list, uh, like the items of files that are in my home directory, and it will list and number all of those as well, just simply by changing um, <clears throat> what I use instead of basket. <clears throat> 